ESPN NBA 2K5, a game I recently called a masterpiece, is one of the greatest sports video games ever made. Thanks to its deep franchise mode, solid gameplay, and ESPN branded presentation, it was the complete package. ESPN NBA 2 Night 2002, on the other hand, was not the complete package. This game was Konami's second in the series, and while it was an improvement over the first title, it was simply a basic, shallow sports game. Despite its mediocrity, however, if it wasn't for Konami's failed NBA game, legendary titles like the aforementioned 2K5, or even modern-day NBA 2K games, would be drastically different, and potentially worse. Through a very solid franchise mode and decent use of the ESPN license, ESPN NBA 2 Night 2002 was a demo of just how immersive sports video game presentation could become. Konami made other sports games that year, including ESPN NFL Primetime 2002, a game I recently made a video about, but they were all critical and commercial failures. Why buy NBA Tonight when you could buy NBA 2K or NBA Shootout or NBA Live? Despite its commercial failure, the features and innovations Konami pioneered were adopted and later perfected by the more successful franchises, which goes to show that more competition almost always leads to better products all around. You could argue that today, the largest issue with NBA 2K is the lack of competing games. 2K has no incentive to attempt to revolutionize the genre, or even make their games less predatory because they can get away with coasting by since they are the only game in town. It's a common theme for every single sports game out today, with the exception of golf titles. Thankfully, we have an EA and a 2K PGA Tour game now, which should eventually result in something special. I'm getting tired of making this obvious point about how competition is a good thing for consumers, but it's difficult not to mention when going back over these older, lesser-known sports games from the golden era. There was less room for error back then. If your game wasn't as good as the rest, it wouldn't be successful. But even if that was the case, the game could still have a lasting impact. ESPN NBA Tonight 2002 is a great example of that. No one cared about it when it released, and no one cares about it today, but it was ahead of its time and indirectly helped create some of the greatest sports games ever made. Let's take a deeper look. The best part of this game from my experience was the franchise mode. When setting up a league, you could choose what teams you want in each division or conference, or you could hit a button that says randomize and create the most nonsensical league realignment ever. You can choose simulated quarter length, franchise length from 5 to 25 seasons, playoff formatting, and even optionally start the league with a fantasy draft. When viewing rosters, you can view decently detailed player profiles showing your player's attributes and skills. You can also change your offensive and defensive strategies along with a few coaching settings. You could view league records, stats, league news, including injuries, injury recoveries, which you don't normally see, signings and trades, and you could even toggle on or off most of the league's rules and switch between simulation or arcade gameplay styles. In terms of depth, None of this sounds crazy or that special today, but back in 2001, this was better than your average franchise mode by a good bit. The weird part, however, was the lack of a salary cap. Instead, Tonight 02 used a points system, where each team had a specific number of points they could spend, and signing a free agent would cost points depending on how good they were. It's technically almost the same, but still kind of strange. There was also an option for cheats inside franchise mode, so I looked up the codes, as you can see here, and I used the one called Ballhead. This was the end result. I honestly love it when games have stupid features like this. For 2001, franchise mode was really good, but Tonight 02's lackluster gameplay prevented the game from reaching its potential. The game provides access to standard moves for players, including post-ups, fake dribbles, and quick shake moves, Although the latter two barely work, the fake dribble move aims to deceive opponents into anticipating a drive, but it rarely succeeds against computer opponents, diminishing its usefulness in single player. The quick shake move, which prompts the player to dribble the ball randomly, fares slightly better, yet the computer controlled opponents tend to tightly guard your players, making it challenging to create open shots without utilizing pick and rolls. Notably, NBA Tonight 2002 lacks certain common moves found in other basketball games, such as the fadeaway jumper. 
and strangely when big men are near the basket, they often choose to shoot a jump shot instead of dunking, resulting in considerable frustration. Similarly, driving the ball to the basket and executing layups becomes arduous, as players tend to default to jump shots rather than finishing with layups when you would expect them to. Even during fast breaks, executing these moves proves challenging for several reasons, including the game's poor passing mechanics. While an optional icon-based passing system exists for slower, more precise passes, NBA Tonight's default passing system is really bad. Often when attempting to pass the ball in a specific direction, your player will end up passing it in the complete opposite direction. Changing the camera angle to a more direct view does not rectify the issue, rendering fast breaks incredibly difficult to execute. The AI is very flawed as well. One recurring problem is players getting tangled up with each other during a game, obstructing their movement on the court. These instances are not intentional picks, rather, the players seem to aimlessly run into each other. As I mentioned earlier, the computer-controlled opponents stick right on your players, almost as if they are magnetized to them. This behavior disrupts the flow of the game and really detracts from the realism. The effectiveness of the play-calling system is also questionable. Sometimes your players will simply stand idle until you repeatedly call for a specific play. The AI issues also extend to the defensive side of the ball. When switching control of players on defense, the expectation is that it would switch to the player nearest to the guy with the ball, but instead, it doesn't function consistently at all, resulting in instances where an opposing player is left unguarded, and when you try switching to guard the player, you're just switching to everyone else. Even the button mapping was weird, and not just within gameplay. When selecting a team, instead of using the D-pad like you would expect, you use the square and circle buttons to cycle between teams, which I found incredibly strange. While the gameplay left a lot to be desired, presentation almost helped carry the game entirely, and it's what most people would remember this game for. ESPN branding is found all throughout the game, from the intro to the in-game broadcast to the settings options. Everything has that early 2000s nostalgic ESPN vibe, helping the game feel less generic. Stuart Scott and Brent Musburger provide commentary, and it's okay for 2001. The pregame presentation in the arena looks great, and graphically, this game has some very detailed player models for the time, although the movement and animations don't exactly look great. The ESPN presentation in this game would later be reused in 2K sports games after their license ended with Konami, and 2K did a much better job with it but they can thank Konami for giving the idea an expensive trial run. There's really not much else to say about this game. It's a pretty generic NBA title with an above average franchise mode, below average gameplay, and the ESPN license. It deserves credit for demonstrating the ESPN license within an NBA game better than the first NBA Tonight title, but compared to NBA Live 02 and NBA 2K2, this game just wasn't up to par. While sure, this game had ESPN and its competitors didn't, at the end of the day the most important part of a sports game is gameplay. You have to nail that first. 2K and Live both played a lot better, had more dribble moves, had more advanced AI, and had more variation. If ESPN NBA Tonight 2002 was all you had, then it was likely a fine NBA game you might have fond memories of. But it couldn't compete with the competition for long. Had Konami never made these sports games, however, there's a chance 2K never would have seen the potential in the ESPN branding. By showcasing true broadcast presentation, 2K was able to combine its superior gameplay with an improved version of Konami's ESPN license. If you're looking for a PS2 era NBA game to play, ESPN NBA 2K5 is obviously a better choice, as well as NBA Live 2005. There's really no reason to play NBA Tonight 2002 unless you want your players to have a basketball printed on their heads. However, even mediocre or poor quality competing products help give consumers a better market, and without any competition at all, you get the stagnant sports video game landscape we see today. The next year, Konami released NBA Starting 5, which no longer featured the ESPN license. The result was an even worse game that felt as generic as could be, and with NBA Shootout, NBA 2K, and NBA Live all being much better games, Konami's last NBA title was an even bigger failure than the previous one, and it marked the end of the series. 
Goodbye, Konami's licensed sports games. You were usually mid and sometimes garbage, but you made all the other games better, and that made it all worth it. Thanks for watching.